For this assignment, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze Drape and Flow page 2, and this is all dresses. You're going to want to have this printout along with your two mirrored walking poses, a blank piece of paper, your pencils, erasers, and your clear ruler. Let's start by analyzing this first girl here with the black lacy dress. All right, so for this girl here, her support leg is here on her left side, which would mean her knees, the hem of her skirt, her hips, and this waist seam will all be popping here to the left side. What we can do is, let's start by getting this plumb line in here. So it's already on your handout, for me, I'm going to make mine just a little bit darker so it's easier to see in the video. So with a sharp number two pencil, let's just come in here and we're going to outline the bodice area. So getting the sides, her armhole, the shoulder, and then down here at the waist, it's curving upwards. So just for now, just ignore her hand on hip. And then taking a closer look here, you can see where the neck V is a little bit off center from the plumb line. And that's because the center front is also coming down right here. And then eventually coming back up to her neck. So this is similar to a walking pose where after it gets down to her uh, bottom of her rib cage, then the center front is going to start drifting here off center favoring to this side where the weight of her leg is. Let's come down here where we can see the hem of the skirt and her knees. And go ahead and just uh, lightly figure out what's the angle of the skirt here. And then we can go ahead and get that a little bit darker with a ruler. And you can see that it's popping off to her left side. And then the knees would be doing the same thing. So come down to the center of this kneecap here and making sure you're parallel with the hem you just drew. And you'll notice that this will be going through pretty much the middles of both knees. This kneecap is slightly lower than that guideline because she's taking her weight off of this just like on a walking foot pose. So now what we can do is we can take the distance from this side of her dress to this side of her dress, find the middle of that. So at first you can just take a guess, check it. And then you can see here just roughly heading back towards the center front from her bodice. We can see the angles of what would be the center front coming down here. Now on this dress, there is no center front. But at this point, we're just trying to figure out exactly what's going on with this dress. Let's go ahead and outline what her, the sides are doing. And then down here, we'll notice because her hips are popping to the left side, that it's larger from here to here. There's more space. So this will be plus. And then from her leg to this side of the skirt is very small. So this would be minus. Now what's going on with this dress is there's a solid layer underneath and then there's this sheer lacy layer on top. And you can see here where the solid layer stops. So her legs are going through the sheer layer and then they stop here. So come in here and draw what would be the hem for the solid so the rest of the skirt from here up is not see-through. And down here where it is see-through, you can still draw her leg all the way up to there. Also, this is following on a slight curve here. And you can see the hem of the dress is also following this light curve. So what I want you to do is come over here and draw an arrow going like that. And then there's a second arrow here. So it's curving up and away. Then the lacy edge of the dress here, it has a scalloped edge. So you would follow these scallop edges 
but you're also following along with the curve. Now the same thing is going on up in this area here. You can see there's like some lace and then there's a little bit of a reveal so you can see the layer underneath. At first what you'll want to do is you'll want to follow the same curve as, as what's happening with the hems. And then here we can see where the lace would be doing something and so it's revealing that area right there. Now something else that's going on up here is there's the lace that's coming up off of her neck. The neckline itself, the, again, this is solid fabric from here to here, but then you have this lace that's coming out, off, and back down, and then around. If you look here in the waist area, you're gonna see some wrinkles and pleats coming downward. The reason is, is when you have a yardage of fabric that has a scalloped edge like this, the fabric itself was made just going straight across. So here's your scalloped edge, and the whole thing is just a big giant rectangle. But when we put it on our model, and we want this to be fitted into the waist, what we have to do is we have to put some um, some shearing through here. So there's going to be like some stitching or elastic. It's going to be sheared through there and it's going to scoop this in and in. And all along here is going to be some wrinkles and pleats. And that's how they're getting it. So it's fitted into the waist, but you have these straight scallop edges along the bottom. So that's what's going on up here at the top. The bodice area is very smooth and clean, and there's probably a dart right here and right here to make it all fitted nice and perfect up here in the bodice area. Down in this area here where we have all of these little pleats and wrinkles. How you would draw this is on the sides of the skirt, you would puff out off the body slightly and come back downward. So there's a difference between the fitted bodice here and then the skirt having a little built-in volume. And then following along the skirt here, what you would do is when there's a seam, you're going to come down just below that and do like these little M's, I's, J's, and Y's. And if the skirt is curving this way, you'll put some wrinkles in curving that way. As you get to the middle, you're just going straight down. And as you come out to this side, you're curving out that way. So now we can see it's got that built-in volume and it's shearing the, all the way around. It's shearing through the waist here. So take out your two mirrored walking poses and we'll use girl, the model B, since the support leg here is on her left side. And a new clean piece of paper. And again, we'll use this landscape so then we can fit several dresses across as we go. So using this pose right here, we're gonna have our paper on top. And again, we're gonna draw a dress. So it's gonna go from her shoulders down to about her knee level. So go ahead and center up your page so you can get all of that on here. And then we wanna find where was the plumb line. So if you notice up on my croquis, it's here at her forehead, down here at the middle of her toe. So I can see that the plumb line would be somewhere in the middle right here. And then for just for a second, I want to ignore the model underneath here. And I want to make sure that I'm drawing a plumb line that's square with my piece of paper. And now I'm ready to put this plumb line back into place. So now I have my plumb line back into place and I've taped this down so it doesn't move. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come up here and we'll develop what's going on with the bodice. So now remember, we're going to be drawing clothes, 
and it needs to be wider than her body. And what we'll do is we'll start with the bodice since the bodice was fitted pretty much to the body. So we can follow right here this armhole that we already have from our croquis. And you'll notice if this was her bra, we want to cover that up a little bit. So follow up the side seam just a little bit higher than that bra and make another side seam for her dress. And then we'll do the same thing here on the other side. So this is the side seam. And then we want to make the armhole for the dress, but not showing her bra underneath. Again, whatever you do on one shoulder, we'll want to do the same for the other one. And then we want to come down for this v-neck, but we need to make sure that we're hitting the center front and ignoring the plumb line. So just from the neck down, let's go ahead and erase this plumb line. So then looking back here at the model, you can see this is coming down probably just above where her bra would be underneath there. So we'll come down to center front just above her bra and then this will connect back up to that shoulder and the same thing on this side. Now in order for this garment to be fitted, it has a center seam and two darts. So we can use the center seam here from our croquis coming down. And this is the location for the two darts. What we'll do is we'll come up and we'll stop before we get to the apex of the bust. For the waistline, I would say that this is coming down somewhere inside the waist and see how it's curving up a little bit. So it's definitely higher than her top of hip bone. So it's somewhere here in the waist area. So it's a combination of hitting the middle of here and the middle of here. Because it's a one piece dress falling down into here, the shoulders are following these guidelines and then the natural waist is starting to curve down and then when we get to the hemline, it'll start to head the other direction. So connect that down here and then make sure you're always leaving room so this is off of her skin. Now taking a look at the dress here, the bottom half is called the drape. So the top half is the bodice, this is the drape. And for the under layer, this under layer for the dress here is probably just a little bit longer than a mini skirt. So a mini skirt would be five and a half heads down and we'll go a little bit longer than that. So I'm going to go ahead and get one head here. I'll come down to my full hip. So this would be five heads down. And then I'll come back up here and I'll find half of the head and I'll add half a head to that. So this is about five and a half heads down. So let's draw a straight line and you're matching the same angles as her knees. This will be where the under layer is coming down to. And then the, the sheer layer with the scalloped edge comes down a little bit further. So we'll just add some more distance to that. And then remember, we're gonna need to find about where the center front would end up down here so we can evenly divide the hem of the skirt. So taking a look at the center front from your model underneath, we could come down to the hem of the dress. So now we know if this side puffs out a little bit and is coming down close to her leg, then we can measure the distance back to center front and then away from center front. And then here we can find the other side of her skirt. Now for getting the curve of the bottom hem of the skirt, we want to come up the same distance here and the same distance here so then we can curve down towards center front and back out. And then we'll follow that same curve right here. Now when you connect your side seams back up to the waist, make sure that you're poofing into the waist a little bit. So then it looks like the bodice is fitted and structured. And then later on when we add our gathers all through here, you'll know why the skirt puffed off her hips right here.
The last thing I want to get here is if you remember, so the princess panel heading up was just a straight line from her rib cage up. But we had talked about if anything crosses over the waist area, it would start to curve. So this dart right here would start to aim as a curve back into the seam right here. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll move the dart to match what the garment's doing and I'll come back and I'll hit my bodice at the bust apex from the croquis underneath. And making sure to stop before you get to the apex of the bodice. So now we have the basics of the dress silhouette. What I wanna do is I wanna just get a little bit of her legs. So this is her leg coming down her kneecap. And remember, we're going to go beyond the sheer layer and up to the solid layer. And then let's come up here and get her neck and shoulders. Now what you would do up here at the neck area is where you can see the line for the shoulder, this would become her collarbones. And where the center of her neck is coming down to this level, you could put this little divot here for the base of her throat. And then her neck will go just a little bit in front of the trapezius muscles. And then the neck itself will just stop. Make sure you get in her armpits here so we can see where the, the our sleeve is wrapping around her body and this is her armpit sticking out. Coming down here to the dress, so remember that there's a bunch of gathers here in order to bring all that fabric into her waist and leaving the hem with the scalloped edging. So as you do your gathers, on this side you're gonna follow this hip and start to straighten out when you come to the middle and then start to curve towards this hip as you move along. So here I'm going to erase some of the plumb line and then underneath here I have a sense of what's going on with the center front as well as the princess panel guidelines. So again you're going to do these small little Y's, M's, J's, and short little I's. to get your gathers along the top of the skirt area. And the side seam of the skirt will come up and into the waist. And again, the waist right here is just snug right into the seam. Now down at the hem area, usually these, these layers are separate. So we want to have the solid skirt feel like it's a little bit smaller than the outside layer. So what you could do here is make the solid skirt come back up. Erase this little bit. And then the sheer layer will stick out just a little bit further and maybe even start to bell out so just an ever so slight outside curve right in this area. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. So now we get a sense of it's two separate layers. Now down here for the hem of this, what we're going to start to do is we're going to start showing that there's scallop edges that is part of the lacy design. So following along with this hem right here, you'll have the edges of your scallop come down and touch that. Now also if you recall, there's this design here where in the middle there's a little bit of a reveal so you can see the color of her underskirt underneath there. And this is basically following here around this full hip area. 
So again, you want to curve down with gravity and following the angle of the full hip. And we can do this little reveal pattern. So it's just lace that's moving around and it'll all be dark down here and light in the middle. And then remember up at her neck area, there was a little bit of lace that's like sticking out onto her neck skin. So this would be all lacy and there's little pieces that stick out here. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I would have to literally be holding the garment to see. But this will give you an idea of how to follow the curve of the body while you're doing something like this. So now if I separate my design away from the croquis underneath, we can look at just what we have here for the dress. And if I wanted to give it just a little bit more of that lacy feeling, what I could do is I can take a piece of a tool. So this is just some basic white tool. And I can put it underneath my drawing here. And then as I rub off with my pencil, we can get some of that texture. And then for to show that there's a little bit of a area here where it's a little bit more see-through, then you can come in and the lacy, the lacy parts that are coming upwards, you can come back and hit them even darker a second time. And we can do the same thing up in here as well. And then ultimately what you would do is you would provide this drawing and you'd have swatches of the fabric to go with it. And then the sample sewers and pattern makers would have a really good idea of what is going where. So I went back in, just I darkened a little bit here on the gathers and the seams. But I don't want to come back and darken on center front and the darts and everything because realistically all of this stuff is hidden in the construction anyways. You just have to lightly put it in here so the pattern maker knows that this is a fitted garment with two darts in the front. So for this one we had the fitted bodice and then the little bit of a flare skirt. For the second one here we have the opposite. So the bodice itself is loose and it flows and cuts back up into here. So it's a blouson. And then we have the skirt piece below it. Even if it's a one piece dress, it still is acting as if though there's a top and a bottom that are separate. So come in here and let's just start to outline the shirt, but don't do the waist area yet. So come up to where you can see there's a seam for her sleeves and some of the bodice and then get the sleeve itself. It's curving downwards for the cuff and the sleeve puffs and pops out of here. Curving down. And then the shoulders are gonna connect back up for a crew neck and back down. Now before we draw what's happening here in the waist, let's come down to the skirt area. So again, her weight is here on her right foot so all of the skirt is popping to her right side. So let's start here. The side seam of the skirt is coming up. The, uh, this leg here is making the skirt kind of pop up here. And then the walking foot, it's dropping back down here. And then we move to the other side. And you can see because there's a lot of volume here and here that this skirt itself has a lot of structure to it. So as she's walking, it's not flowing so much. It's moving more like a bell shape. You can also see some of the skirt is dropping back behind here. So let's get her leg in here first of all. And how I would draw this is I would erase some of the hem from the front right there. And the side seam 
from the skirt would turn into the curve going back behind her legs. And then the hem itself would stop right at the corner. Now let's talk about what's going on up here. So basically her skirt is tucking in and the shirt is folding under. Also you can see some of it is sticking out over here and it's tight here. So it's doing the opposite. So this side of her skirt is flowing that way. Her shirt, the hem of the shirt is flowing this way. So if we follow along, this is popping out to this side but it's cupping back under and connecting somewhere underneath here. So taking out your croquis, the same model here is the same as model A. So bring your paper over and get it prepared so we can draw another dress next to this one. All right, so let's start here again at the top. So basically the side seams are really loose on her body, but it's gonna be the, um, the shoulders and the sleeves are gonna come back to its normal position. And the sleeve here is just a little bit of a, of a drop sleeve out to the outside. So you can see the seam from your croquis. Let's just go a little bit beyond that and this will become her sleeve. And remember the sleeve comes down and it stops before it gets to her elbow joint. And the hem of the sleeve will curve downwards. Make sure you do the same thing on this side. So whatever the distance is from here to here, make it the same here to here. Now let's come up here and we'll give her the same crew neck top so the neckline connecting back to the shoulders and again this is always a little bit higher than her skin and now you can put in a little bit of her trapezius muscle her neck coming down Now, for what the top is doing, you remember on this side, it's popping out even further than this side. And what would be nice is to have the skirt in place first. So down here at the knees, we can see that these two skirts are about the same height. So you can see, just judging what the distance is from the knee and following along with the angle of the knees, somewhere around in this area. And you can see here on the pose, that it's scooping up from the support leg and scooping down on the walking leg. So here we'll go upwards and then here we'll scoop downwards. And since her hips are popping to this side, the skirt is gonna pop way out to this side here, back towards her waist. So now we can see it's got this kind of a cute bell dress that has a little bit of stiffness to it as she's moving along and it's kicking off to the side that has her support leg. Now it's starting to come into her waist area and then we want the top to come down and blue song back up into here. As well, the top itself is going to be favoring off to this side just like the hem of the dress was favoring off to that side. So now we can see that somewhere over here is where that top would be coming down. Making this very round on the corner here is letting the sample sewer and the pattern maker know that the fabric is curving back underneath. And then you can see that the hem or the bottom fold of this is following what her shoulders are doing. So take a look at what her rib cage is doing and come down into here and you can see what the other side of the dress would do. And on this side, it should stick out more than on this side. Okay. 
So if we were to do some kind of a see-through view, basically what's happening is, is the skirt is coming up inside of here and there's like an elastic waistband and the shirt itself is scooping back under and it's connected right to there. But heading all the way around her body. Now taking a second look back at this, so I'm just taking a notice where here's her knees and her full hip. And if I come down to what I was guessing was about her dress hem, I feel like that this area here is scooping down too much to be following that hem. So I want to take this exact same design and I'm just going to move it upwards more. So I just want to have the turnaround up here somewhere and the, the skirt itself will flow and drop like that. Now one last thing is, if you notice the design, so basically up close you can see these are little tiny hearts that are on here and somebody hand beaded these into here and it's very condensed here in the waist area and then it gets light as you move out. If you wanted to signify that you don't have to sit here and draw a thousand little hearts we just need to know that in this area it's more condensed and then as you move out into here there's less of it. And then, of course, you could come in with some pencil and just do a little more shading to show that this area here has a lot of those metal hearts. And then, of course, you would provide them with a swatch of the fabric. Now, for both of these garments, we're not showing how to finish like the armholes and the necklines and stuff. So basically this is probably double lined so you could finish all of the raw edges with the liner from the inside and this would be a more expensive garment. Now let's analyze this dress here in the middle. So this girl here she's wearing a one-piece dress and it's a wrap style dress. So this side is coming over on top. The right side is coming here and overlapping on top of the left side. So if you take a closer look at it you can see here where it's overlapping. So go ahead and come in and draw that down to the waist area and this would go up to her shoulders and then this is the seam for her sleeves and this is the side of the dress coming down to the waistband. The other side would be doing the exact same thing, but it's hiding underneath here. And since her hips will be popping here to the left side, her shoulders would be popping here to the right side. So this one would be a little bit lower than that one. Now you can also see there's a little bit of a dress here that's flying away. So go ahead and follow this down and it's scooping around her leg before it flows back into space. And then go ahead and draw in her front, or this is her back leg. So go ahead and draw in what would be her back walking foot, and then this is the front support leg, and her kneecaps. So then the skirt underneath it's going to be doing the same thing. It's going to be coming from here, traveling through here, and then you can see it's popping out underneath. And then this one got caught on her leg, so as she's walking forward, her leg is hitting this. So it's stuck right to her leg. And there's a pleat right here, some kind of a fold right there, and then this is flowing out into space. 
Now here at the waist, this is like a little sash belt. It probably has a little tiny belt loop somewhere, but basically it's coming through here, and after she wraps the dress and puts it on, then she's gonna tie this in the front. Now there's some other things going on and flowing here, and it feels like they've taken some of the, the main body fabric and made also some kind of a sash or something so when you tie it, it all ties together. I'm not sure exactly. But the most important thing is, is we're analyzing this as a wrap dress. Now you can see from here to here, it's got some more structure. And then moving below, this is actually all just sheer layers and you could even start to see her leg behind here. So for instance, if this was a color photograph, you would see that the skin from her leg would be going all the way back into there. And then the flow of this dress here is just going in the wind. And then let's go ahead and get her sleeves. Now this is the walking hand that is coming towards us. And here's would be the, that diamond thumb technique for the hand coming towards us. So the cuff of the sleeve now, we can see inside of it, so this is curving upwards. Again, we're looking inside of the dress. We can see up into the sleeve, so it's curving upwards. This arm, we can't see the cuff of the sleeve, but if we could, it would be curving downwards and it's going back into space just like how this is curving down and that's curving down. Once you come up here, so the sleeve is gonna to connect to the body, come up here and just scoop it back into the body. And always draw the sleeve separate from the seam here. So for me, I'll draw the seam connecting to the shoulder and then I'll draw the sleeve separately because that's exactly how it is when you cut and sew it. You're gonna make this separate from that. Now we can't really see her neck and everything because of all of her hair, but you could pretty much guess her trapezius muscles are coming in, her neck is coming down, you would see her collarbone, and right here would be the base of her neck. And you can kind of see what's going on with her bust here. You can see the stripes here. They don't get interrupted, so I think there's probably a French seam dart off to the sides to not interrupt with the, um, the pleats coming downwards or the stripes coming downwards. And then over here, if you want, you can show just a little bit of some cleavage to show like how low cut this dress actually is. So then let's just go over here to also show that this leg would be traveling up towards her body. And if this was a color photo, you would see some skin underneath these sheer layers. Now where you wouldn't see her skin is where the two layers are overlapping in this area. So they're so thick that they're hiding her underneath. Now the layer of the wrap dress that's on top is folding over towards her left side. So again, this layer here is the top layer and it's coming to the left side. And this is for women's wear. They're used to having all their buttons towards the left side, jackets, everything's closing towards the left side. So if we move over to the next dress here, this is not a layered dress, but there's a detail work here off to the side where it's slitting upwards. You could see some seams that are coming together at this location. And again, everything is here on her left side. Let's start by analyzing the neckline and armholes. So here we can see into her sleeve because she has her arm up. And then this is kind of a Jewel neck, open neck. On this side here, the sleeve is just going straight down and her shoulder is coming out of there. Now if you look really closely, there's a seam that comes along through here and it's connecting right there. 
And then this is the waist seam, which separates the bodice from the skirt. And in order to make this fitted, they have another little seam right here. So it's this armhole seam that's pointing back towards the apex of the bust. And there's probably another one over here. You just can't see it because she's slightly turning away from us. Down here, what's going on is there's a layer that's flowing down and scooping out. And the second layer that's going underneath this. And the side of the upper layer coming down and curving and curving back into here. And then you can see there's a couple more little pleats here. At first it might be hard for you to see, but it's following along like a seam and then it stops and it releases. So it's probably sewn for a little while and then the rest of it is a release pleat. So again, the, in the bodice here, it's a seam. Down here, it's probably a seam for a little bit and then a release pleat right there and there. And then you can see the other side of her dress flowing out to the other side of her body. Now for the drape of the dress here, there's actually three things going on. There's this overlay piece there's all this sheer stuff hanging down, and then there's the actual mini skirt underneath, which is a, a solid color. You can see now, so her leg is coming down, and this little micro mini skirt underneath here is starting to curve to follow her leg. Basically what it's doing is it's curving up for this leg and curving back for that leg hiding underneath there. The sheer layers are probably cut on the bias because you can see these corners are coming down and they just left them, um, I think, just raw. So to show this, you would just come down and you would show it's just flowing, hitting corners, coming back up. And then wherever you've drawn these little bumps and waves, you can do trumpets heading back up into the dress. And then let's go ahead and get some more of this leg here. Now it's hard for you to see in the video, but you can just start to see a little bit of this leg traveling up, as well as this leg. So again, if this was a color photo, the skin from her leg, you would see it traveling up until it hit this little mini skirt underneath. And for this one, the skin is traveling all the way up to this last layer of the dress here. For the last drawing that we'll do here, we'll do the sheer wrap dress. So you can see that her left leg is her support leg. So that would be the same here as our Model B. So go ahead and set up your paper to work with this and we'll draw this dress. So now I have my paper taped to my croquis. I have a plumb line that's square with my piece of paper. And then I have the plumb line lined up with the croquis underneath. For drawing a wrap dress, the very first thing I want to know is where is it going to connect over here on her body? So if you take a look back at your model, basically this wrap uh, belt right here is right at her natural waist area. So we can come in here to this natural waist area and let's come over to the crunch side and then move over here to where her um, princess panel is. And let's just put a circle there as a reminder that everything's going to be heading towards this direction. Now we can make a belt in here. And at first, you need to decide, is it going to follow the hips or the rib cage? Since this is a one-piece dress, as you move down 
into the waist area, it starts to get straight across before it starts moving below the waist. So to keep things really simple, you can just make the belt straight across. And then out here, make this belt bigger than her body. Now the dress itself was very low cut. We could even show there was like a little cleavage here. So looking at your bra, we can see what the minimum cut was right here for her bra. And then this was her bust apex. So if she had a little bit of cleavage, it would be right around in this area. And what we could do is we can also come up here and start to show like this would be her collarbone, the bottom of her throat, her neck, trapezius muscles. So then we'll have a sense of having this be a low cut dress coming through this area. So basically I'm heading towards the center of her shoulder. I'm cutting down to show a little cleavage and then we're aiming for where the overlap is occurring at. For this one, you would do the exact opposite. So where you are crossing center front from the croquis underneath. So if it helps at this point, go ahead and erase the plumb line. And then come in here and we'll get our center front. So you'll know that this side here needs to cross right where that center front is, is where it's going underneath and coming back up to the center of her shoulder. So the two are doing the exact opposites. Now we can see that the, the shirt itself or the dress, the bodice area itself, is a little bit loose. I think there's some kind of a French dart right here. But over here, so off of the side of her body, we can come in and start to get, here would be her shoulder seam, here and here. And then you just have this loose flowy dress that's coming back down to the waist belt. And I'll draw this in a little bit darker now. Now inside of here, the shoulders itself has a lot of structure to it. There's a seam, the seams are pressed under. If this is lined, there's four layers, all in that shoulder seam area. And some uh, garment houses, they might even put a mini little shoulder pad in there as well. But for sure, these shoulders stick up higher than her trapezius muscles. So once you come up to here, you'll want to travel higher than that muscle skin underneath and come back down for the front. And then we'll do the sleeves. So again, the sleeve is coming out of here and starts traveling downwards. Do the same thing here. So then before I come back and start to darken in this center front line, I just wanna make sure I have the same distance on both of these. And I'm noticing one's larger than the other. If I look back at the photo, it's actually kind of large. So what I'll do is I'll make this one here slightly bigger. <clears throat> no, I'll actually make this one a titch smaller so we can kind of get this flow coming off of here. Then let's come down into the waist area. So basically we would want to draw the sash tie first before we start drawing the things that are underneath it. So looking at her body here, we can just get a sense of how it would flow. And in the photo, I only see one, but I know somewhere in there, there would be two. And then I'm not quite sure what's going on with this extra fabric here, but we'll just ignore it for now. Again, a little bit of her hip would be popping out here, and then the dress itself would be coming down. And here she has where this is kind of a structured area. It's going down below 
her full hip or her high hip. So here's the high hip from her underwear. It's going a little bit below that. And then the rest of this dress will just flow right out off of that. And the other side would come out of here. And remember, it's flowing right up along her leg before it moves out. So here I've lightly drawn in what her hand is doing. And then again, on the sleeve, you'll want to curve up because this is the walking hand that's coming forward towards the camera. And then as you move up the sleeve, once you get to this elbow joint area, you can do a couple little ripples to show it's wrinkling where her body is bending. And then the same thing on this other sleeve here, just a couple wrinkles right there at the elbow joint. Now for the dress itself, it's pretty easy to understand what's going on up here. But down here, it gets a little bit confusing on what layers are what. So what I'll do is I'll put just a little bit of a binding along the front edge so you can see the difference between the two. And now you can see here, so I put a little bit of binding on the front so you can see which layers are in front of which layers. And then I also did a little bit of shading on the sash so you would know that this and the belt were all from the same fabric. Now as a beginning class, this is good enough for now. Eventually, as you move on to drawing your floats, you'll want to start to get more and more technical on all the different details and textures. But go ahead and uh, scan this and turn this in as part of your assignment, as well as analyzing your four girls from the Drape and Flow page two.